Hey everyone, welcome to part four of the Simple Core 300 by 300 build and the final video of Simple Core. The printer is essentially done. I've completed all of uh, the 3D printed parts, the design that I wanted to do, and um, we'll talk a little bit about that um, near the end of this video here, but I wanted to run some people through the uh, bill of materials here. I have officially updated it. Um, it's basically final. The same thing for the 200 build. I have two tabs down here in the bottom, Symbol Core 200 and Symbol Core 330. And I've finally updated the uh, final prices. So let's go over the Simple Core 300 here really quick. Um, <clears throat> I guess this is a 330. We're using a 330 build area. So it is 330 by 330 printable. So um, pretty straightforward here. Again, uh, the printer is meant to be very simple, so I'm using kind of standard sizes, even numbers. So we have a 500 millimeter 2020 extrusion. There's 16 of those. Then there's two 400 millimeters for the bed frame, which is in a T formation. Two sets of 2020 corner brackets. And then um, I've outlined the hardware here. I haven't put in, I mean, you can grab the M5 hardware wherever you would like. Try to find the cheapest place. And then for M3 hardware, I just put two packs of assorted hardware. This is definitely not the cheapest way to go about this, but to get a multitude of sizes for like the Eva tool head and other things than that, it's much easier just to buy an assortment. So again, I'd recommend you buy it from like Granger in Canada or um, a master car or something like that in the US. Um, if you can, to save a little bit of cost there. For motion, um, we're just using the same size as the frame, essentially. So for the uh, X here, we're doing an MGN 12. That's kind of a, we want a really beefy linear rail there to support the tool head. So it's a MGN 12 for the X, 500 millimeters. Two MGN 9s for the Y. They can be, uh, they don't have to be 12s, obviously. I, I chose nine so that you could enclose the printer if you wanted to. In hindsight, because I'm using some corner brackets that pushes out the, would push out the panels, you could technically go with an MGN 12 here. You would have to modify the printed parts to accept an MGN 12, but I'll leave that up to like user mods and things like that. Three MGN nine for the Z. Now, if you go with a 300 millimeter sized Z rail, you're going to only get about 230 millimeters of Z build height. If you want a full 300 Z height, I would just increase this to 400 millimeters. If you're going to do that, you're going to have to change four of these to be 600 millimeters. So your vertical, your four vertical extrusions would be 600 millimeters and your linear rail for the Z would be 400 millimeters. That would give you a 300 millimeter, roughly a little bit over um, Z build height. I built it just with 230 millimeters. I generally don't build things that tall. So 230 millimeters was completely fine for me. Uh, we have five NEMA 17 motors. Buy the cheapest motors you can find um, for the most part. Um, I haven't found a whole lot of quality with different motors. I've tried cheap Amazon motors. I've tried Moon's motors. I've tried Creality motors. They all seem to produce the similar uh, print quality um, at the speeds I'm printing. So there's five motors, three for the Z, one for, the, uh, one for an A motor and one for a B motor. There is an extruder motor, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. I use the standard um, F695 bearings, Voron uses the same one. Get a minimum ABEC7 quality. Um, the, you want the best quality bearings you can get. Two packages of 10 and you'll have some extras. Um, grab those from AliExpress. I try to make sure most of this is from AliExpress because there's a lot of times you can get free shipping. So if you don't have Amazon Prime and things like that, you can get free shipping. Um, and that's why kind of AliExpress is the default here. And then four millimeter GT2 belt um, for the motion system. Um, I think four meters is enough for the size of this build. It, I would maybe recommend going a five or six millimeter or five or six meter length if you want to. Um, 
Maybe I'll actually just change that right now, just just to, so no one runs out of belt length there. But um, three five millimeter bore, uh, ten millimeter wide pulleys. So that's for the Z, and then three five millimeter bore tooth pulleys for the Z, and then ten millimeter wide belt four meter length for Z. All of these are on AliExpress, and I use the Pouge brand which again is kind of a, a Voron spec. So the Z system of this printer is all 10 millimeter width. The motion, the X and Y is six millimeter width. Extruder. So this one is up to the user building this printer. I have chosen to just go with an a, a Orbiter 2.0. It does include the motor and it's relatively inexpensive. And I think you'd get the best bang for your buck with this. The EVA tool head supports Orbiter 2 across the board, which means the EVA 2.4 older version supports this, but also the newest EVA 3.0 that just came out supports the Orb Orbiter 2. So that's why I've chosen Orbiter 2 because it's supported in both iterations of the EVA tool head. And it comes with a motor and it's quite uh, cheap. There's nothing, it's, I think this is SLS printed, so it's very, very high quality and it's very nice. This is the Triangle Labs one, uh, I believe. So that's the extruder I'm recommending. You could definitely get a clone BMG off of Amazon for like $25. You'd still have to buy a NEMA motor for it though. So I think this is probably the best solution for people who want just a cheap extruder, but really good quality. So electronics, we need minimum six stepper drivers. So you have to go with a Fisec Spider or a, a big tree tech octopus because you need a six stepper driver. So generally I'll order uh, the Spider with eight TMC 2209s and that's what's on AliExpress. So um, that's generally what I'm going with. My config file is set up for the Spider pinout. Power inlet standard, buy this anywhere you want. It's relatively cheap on Amazon. AliExpress have them as, as well. Um, 14 bucks. Meanwhile, power supply, uh, 200 watts, 24 volt. These are fanless um, because the bed is heated by 110 volts. Hot end cooling fan. Um, it's a standard 40, 10, 24 volt cooling fan that will cool your hot end. And then the EVA tool head supports a 5015. So again, 24 volts across the board, a 5015 part cooling fan. Try to get as good a quality uh, fans as you can. I linked uh, some decent ones here. I believe this one here is from the Voron Bill of Materials. And this one here um, was the kind of the cheapest one I can find. Generally 15, 50, 15 fans are pretty decent, but I, I think GD Time is a very good brand and Sanon obviously is a very good brand, so. And then SSR, so I chose a generic, um, it's cool, I think it's rated for 50 amps, which is probably not correct, SSR. Um, try to buy the best quality SSR you can. The Voron um, spec out like an Omron, they're like $50. Um, I've been running this Amazon, cheapo Amazon one for quite some time. It was quite heavy. Um, it seems to be rated pretty well. Uh, we'll go to the link here just really quick. So I'm using this one, right? I don't know if this is a genuine Fotec or not. Um, and even if this was underrated and it's not 50 amps, I think the bed takes five amps. So I well over spec this, um, just so that I have headroom, all that kind of stuff again. So, um, buy whatever you like. Uh, I can't guarantee this will be a great one. Um, it's very important you get a good SSR. Generally what will happen is cheap SSRs will fail in the um, like closed position, meaning your heated bed will be on all the time if it fails. Um, and that's something I forgot here. You should always run a um, thermal fuse. So I'm just gonna add that in here really quickly. Um, I forgot to put that in there, but it's good. I'm going through this now here. So. Um, thermal fuse, you can buy these anywhere. Generally, they're 120, 130 degrees C uh, fuse. So if your SSR failed and it started just going out of control, heating, 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 once it got to 130, the fuse would pop and you'd have no fire, essentially. So this is super, super important. They're very inexpensive, like a couple dollars, like five bucks. I think you can get a pack of five or 10 of them on AliExpress. So we'll put that in there. Hot end. 
This is where you can definitely save some money. Um, I do recommend the Fadus Rapido across the board. It comes with a ceramic heater and a thermistor and this hot end heats up very fast. It's all metal, has awesome flow rates. It's just a really good uh, hot end. Now you could save $100 probably by buying a clone uh, E3D V6. However, the e, any E3D V6 is a very old hot end. They don't have great flow. They're an older design. You can't do one-handed nozzle changes or anything like that. But if you're printing slow, try to find a decent quality clone like a Triangle Labs E3D V6 clone, something like that. You could save $100 off of this build. And then for bed, um, the size that I've put in here is the 330 by 30, 330 with the extrusion length. Um, you do, you can use that size. You can get the full 330. I've chosen to just use, I think this is like a Tronxy one. Uh, let's click on it here. I forget what I actually spec'd out. Yeah, so it's just a, a piece of Tronxy glass cut to 330 by 330, it doesn't really matter. And I've given users the ability to use whatever you want. If you wanna go with a 30, 330 by 330 metal tool plate, sure. You wanna go G10, get order a custom piece of G10 in that size, that's what I've done on mine. It's totally up to the user um, and you can mount it however you like. And then we're applying the heated pad directly to that. So this is a little bit pricey, but this is a, a Kenovo, they're a very good brand. Uh, 300 by 300, 120 volt volt, or 120 volt. So again, if you just print PLA and you're okay with printing on painter's tape, you could save yourself $105 here. Um, if you're going with 24 volts across the board, you don't need an SSR then. You can change your silicone pad to a uh, 24 volt pad, but then you're gonna need a much beefier power supply because it's going to be powering your bed. And then it, this is kind of the most important thing here I want to outline for this printer. The entire printer here costs uh, basically just under $1,100 Canadian. This does not include a Raspberry Pi. I don't use a Raspberry Pi. I have an old um, ThinkPad that I run Clipper on because it can run m multiple printers. It saves me a hundred bucks and Raspberry Pis are very hard to find. So what I want to convey to people here is it's 11, basically $1,100 give or take to build a simple core 300, 330 by 330. You can buy a Formbot Trident for $1,300 Canadian shipped. So that's kind of where I'm wrapping this project up. Um, I'm gonna let the community decide what they wanna build. I definitely don't think the simple core is better than the Trident. Um, you could certainly get build a simple core for cheaper if you had all these parts laying around, like you had motors from an Ender 3 or old Ender 3 or something like that. Um, but in my opinion, if we're already approaching like within $200 with a Formbot Trident, you might wanna just go with a Trident. I'm gonna leave that up to um, you know anyone who sees this video or anyone who sees the bill of materials. Uh, I definitely had fun building and designing this printer, but if I were to build this printer from scratch, would I build a simple core or would I build a Trident? Now, yes, the Trident uses more parts. There's a lot more 3D printed parts and it's a little bit more of a complicated build. Um, however, you have to remember for $1,300 Canadian, you're also getting all of the side panels. You're getting um, a frame that has blind joints, so it's going to be more rigid. You're getting a Mic 6 or whatever tool plate. You're getting a Raspberry Pi. So I can't, I don't know if I could really recommend building a simple core for this price when a Trident is so close and you get a Raspberry Pi and you're getting panels if you want an enclosure, that type of thing. Where this might make sense is if someone wanted to build a simple core. Um, they wanted a simpler print printer to build. They're only going to print PLA and they don't need a heated bed. And they're building it with like a V6 clone or something like that. And they got this price down by $200, like $200 less. Then maybe it makes sense, right? You're building this for around $850, $900 Canadian. Um, and you just want a simple Core XY printer that prints PLA. That's That would be okay to me. Um, so... 
And this is kind of just a breakdown of US. All I'm doing here is I'm multiplying or I'm dividing the price here by a um, the exchange rate for uh, Canadian to US. So these prices might, might not be accurate. This might be a little bit cheaper or it might be more money if you were to build it with US prices from AliExpress. So um, that's why I, I wanted to convey this. Um, we'll quickly go to the 200 build. I used exactly the same parts. Um, the only difference is your frame changes in size, 350 millimeters instead of 500. That changes across the board here. And then I've changed the glass bed. It's much cheaper and the heater is much cheaper. So here you can see here, we're saving about $100, I think. Yeah, well, about $70, $80, something like that. So honestly, it, you don't save a lot of money by building a smaller printer either. So again, I'm gonna leave that up to everyone. Um, the printer is essentially complete. I'm not going to be doing anything more with it. I'm not going to be changing any designs. Uh, users can do their own mods to it. They can take it farther if they want to. Um, it's just, in my opinion, um, this is was a really good learning experience for me. I wanted to give the bill of materials out for people if they did want to build this printer. Um, but I think on paper, my recommendation would be if you're looking for a Core XY printer, a do-it-yourself one and you have the budget for an extra, you know, 200 bucks, maybe just build a Trident, uh, especially if you wanna get into ABS later on, all that kind of stuff, because like I say, it has all the panels, it has a Raspberry Pi and everything like that. So um, so that's kind of gonna wrap up the bill of materials. It's gonna wrap up Simple Core. I'm not gonna be doing any more videos on Simple Core uh, unless something kind of comes up. Uh, again, feel free to join my Discord. I'm obviously going to be on there still and I'll help anyone out that's building this printer. Um, I learned a lot like how to set up Clicky Probe and all that kind of thing. So um, my knowledge went quite a bit uh, higher just building this printer and designing a printer myself. But honestly, if, if I were to be asked now, um, I would maybe recommend build, building a Trident if you can. If, if shipping and all that kind of stuff makes sense to you, Again, shipping a Trident to Canada, to my door, it's $1,300. That might be way more money if you ship it to Europe or wherever. I don't know what the prices are in your current location. So maybe a simple core, it's, it's cheaper for you to build a simple core. So um, going forward for my channel, I'm going to be obviously doing still 3D printing stuff. I have a Arduino little remote control, uh, controllable Arduino little rover I want to build that you can control through your cell phone. I am probably going to start looking at designing and really spending some time on my Delta, my Phoenix Delta printer. So I think that's a, I mean, I've always liked Delta better than a Core XY anyway. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my Phoenix Delta and I'm going to redesign the large one with a direct drive, um, like Orbiter or something like that. And, um, maybe tweak the size of it a little bit, make it a nice just round 300 by 300 height and kind of shrink it just slightly, but still have a nice large format Delta. Um, I think Deltas are, are still uh, very unknown printers and I think they're really, really awesome. So I think I'm gonna go forward with that. But uh, again, I appreciate everyone. I appreciate all new subscribers and um, look out for more videos in the future. And uh, that kind of wraps it up for the Simple Core. Thanks again, everyone.